This is an artist review of the 2018 6th gen iPad with pencil support. How does it compare to the Pros? I'll do some comparisons from an art standpoint to the 2017 iPad Pro 10.5, as well as the original 12.9 Pro from 2016. For the rest of the video, all iPads will be set at maximum brightness, and the True Tone display will be turned off on the 10.5. For art, a large screen is a very nice luxury, and some can argue it's a necessity. The 12.9 screen is great for when you want to use slit screen and have a reference to one side. Even with the layers on, you still have a bit of real estate to work with. The 10.5 is a lot more crowded in comparison. And the 9.7 is even tighter. The Pro 10.5 has better color gamut as compared to the 6th gen iPad. When comparing colors, even the original 12.9 Pro looks a bit better. However, if you're not comparing side by side, the iPad 6th gen looks great. The Pro 10.5 has an anti-reflective screen, and although it's not completely without reflection, it does reflect less than the 6th gen iPad. Even without being in a strong reflective situation, you can see the ceiling fan here on the 6th gen iPad, where it's almost invisible on the Pro 10.5. Overall, the pencil feels about the same between the Pro and the 6th gen iPad. If you've seen my original Pro review, you'll see that I've actually turned down the pressure curve sensitivity on the Pros for a better feel. On the 6th gen iPad, I turned it down a tiny bit less than I did on the Pro. Both feel great in terms of pressure sensitivity. The 6th gen iPad does not have a laminated screen like on the Pros. This means that there's a tiny gap between the tip of the pencil and the pixels underneath the glass. Now it still feels more accurate in its location than the Wacom Cintiqs that I've experienced. Even with the gap, the location is just much more accurate. The Pros on the other hand has the pencil tip drawing right on where your line is. It feels like your pixels are right on the surface, not underneath the glass. I don't notice any latency when drawing between the Pros and the 6th gen iPad. This is showing an 85 by 11 inch canvas at 300 dpi with a texture brush. All three feel responsive and without lag. When viewed in slow motion, you do see a difference in the lag. This is probably largely due to the Pro Motion display of the Pro 10.5. If you want to see more about the Pro Motion display, you can check out my other video of the Pro 10.5 review. Even with a smudge tool, it feels perfectly responsive on the 6th gen iPad. I personally just don't really feel a difference between the three devices in terms of the pencil feel. So in short, the pencil works great on the 6th gen iPad. The biggest difference here compared to the Pro in terms of the pencil is really the gap between the pencil tip and your lines. The Pro just feels a little bit more like traditional media, but drawing exactly where the tip is. Here's a speed test of exporting a Procreate file. The 10.5 Pro finished much faster than the 6th gen iPad. The Pro 10.5 has 4 gigs of RAM. Here's a test of duplicating a layer group, doubling the number of layers on a large canvas file. The 2016 12.9 Pro has 2 gigabytes of RAM, and duplicating all of the layers without any issues. The 6th gen iPad, however, even though it has 2 gigs of RAM as well, just crashes every time I try to copy the layer group. In fact, once it crashes and I try to open up the file again, it won't display the file correctly. This is probably more of just a software issue, but I'm surprised that the 6th gen iPad is unable to work with the files that the 2016 Pro can, given the same amount of RAM on each. So the big question is, is the 6th gen iPad good enough, or do you need the Pro to do art? With the added cost, it's really hard to justify the Pro. I think the Pro is worth it if you're really serious about art. All the extra little luxuries do add up to a better art experience. However, I do think the 6th gen iPad is a great art tool, 
and does just about everything the Pro can do. More than anything, I'm just glad that Apple kept it cheap by stripping out all the expensive things that makes the Pro expensive. It made a cheap iPad that still has a great pencil experience. And what I'm most excited about is that hopefully this means that the pencil is supported for all future iPads. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you don't. Please subscribe, comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.